It's September 2022. Cal Raleigh hits a ball off a window in right field to send the Mariners to the postseason for the first time in 21 years. Mayhem in Seattle. About a week later, the Mariners, already up 1-0 in the best of three wildcard series in Toronto, come all the way back from an 8-1 deficit in Game 2 to beat the Blue Jays, ending their season and now winning their first postseason series in 21 years. The Mariners' magic continues. Up next, Houston. And right off the bat, no pun intended, things look real promising. Seattle immediately gets to that year's Cy Young Award winner, Justin Verlander, jumping up 4-0, eventually being up 6-2, and although the Astros did keep things close throughout, the Mariners still led 7-5 going into the ninth inning. First hitter up, Christian Vasquez, one out. Next up, David Hensley, who would get hit, but Altuve would soon strike out, and the Mariners are now a single out away from staying undefeated in the playoffs and winning Game 1 in Houston. One strike away now, until Jeremy Pena lined one in the center to keep the game going, and up comes postseason god and one of baseball's best hitters in general, Jordan Alvarez. Seattle doesn't want him to face the righty, so in comes starting pitcher Robbie Ray to get the lefty on lefty matchup. Things are tense, but again, you're still one out away from a win and up multiple runs. Unfortunately, once that second pitch from Robbie Ray left his hand, nothing has been the same for the Mariners franchise. It's 2024 now, and the Mariners are almost dead last in offense. They simply cannot hit. They're 26th in all baseball and getting on base. They're second to last in slugging, so they have no power. And forget what they do when they make contact, they can barely even do that. They have the least amount of hits in all baseball, are number one in strikeouts, striking out more than anybody in baseball while also having the lowest batting average in all baseball. Who Julio Rodriguez, the man who's at least supposed to be the face of the franchise, has been anything but a star this year. He's done virtually nothing offensively and has been what most of his teammates have been at the plate below average. The Mariners have built such a strong pitching staff over the last several years, doing so much to get it to where it is now, only for the offense to hit rock bottom with no sign of improvement. Now, I could talk about guys who Seattle let go, like Eugenio Suarez and how he's having a nice season in Arizona this year. I could mention Teoscar Hernandez, who's having a fun time in LA, but honestly, I don't think that's the problem. I really don't believe those two guys in particular would be having the same type of season if they stayed in Seattle, because I do believe Seattle is a place hitting goes to die. And it's not even a belief at this point, it's just a fact, it's true. There's enough evidence to show that offense goes down there. So I think it's gotta be a combination of that and the Mariners as an organization and their inability to develop hitting. For whatever reason, they just cannot get guys to that next level. And as a result, the Mariners, a team that was once looked at to have a potential dynasty on their hands, a really good future, is about to take several steps backward. The Mariners were not supposed to miss the playoffs last year. That was not in their plans, no matter how much their general manager Jerry Depoto claims they took a step forward. They didn't. If you want to be positive, you can maybe say that they took no steps and stayed exactly where they were a year before considering they were around the same stat-wise offensively and with pitching. But then again, they missed the playoffs, so it was a step back. And because the Mariners' higher-ups are so content with being mediocre or shooting to be just above mediocre, because they have a whole 54% philosophy, just shooting to be good enough for a long period of time rather than shooting for excellence, they didn't do much over the offseason to help the problem. And as a result, you get what we've seen here in 2024. It's completely insane how polar opposites the two sides of the team is. While the offense is the worst in baseball, the Mariners' pitching, something that has been strong over the years, has only gotten better and is the literal best this year. They lead all of baseball in ERA. Teams have the lowest batting average in all of baseball this year against them. They've walked the least amount of hitters. They're allowing the least amount of runners on base. They've allowed the least amount of hits. I mean, just every important category, they're the best. When it's the complete opposite for the hitting. And speaking of their hitting... Let's go back to that playoff series. When Robbie Ray's 0-1 fastball was obliterated into orbit, we didn't know it at the time, but the Seattle Mariners, or at least this rendition of the team, was broken, crushed, killed that night in cold blood right in front of us, yet it would take two years for us to even realize. Over the next 27 innings of that series, the Mariners scored just two runs and they came in a single inning, the fourth inning of Game 2, one they'd lose 4-2. to two. And then came the miserable Game 3, the first postseason game in Seattle in 21 years. The crowd was up standing the entire time, ready and waiting to go absolutely berserk at any moment. 
But that moment never came. The innings just continued to go by, and the extras they went that led to an 18 inning 1 0 loss. Two games worth of innings were played, and the Mariner pitching staff kept things down the entire game, doing everything they possibly could to give their offense an opportunity to give the standing crowd of almost 50,000 people something to roar about only for them to not do a single thing, collecting just seven hits the entire time, going as silent as the crowd did once Julio's fly ball was caught to end it. This game was almost a warning at the time, but just like Jordan's home run breaking the team, we didn't realize it. It was a metaphor for how this team would be the next two seasons. Because in the time that's since followed, we've basically had game three of the ALDS stretched over 300 games and over 2,700 innings, because over these 300 plus games and 2,700 plus innings, the pitching staff has kept things at bay, doing everything they possibly could while the hitting has been a complete letdown. The biggest letdown, and drastic changes are happening because of it. Scott Service, the man who helped break the Mariners playoff drought, someone who had been the Mariners manager since 2016, is now gone. He's been fired. And how did he find out? An X, aka Twitter notification. Service has since publicly come out and acknowledged this, with DePoto saying he felt awful seeing it, seeing that the manager and hitting coach, who they also fired, found out via the internet rather than DePoto and the higher-ups themselves. And this seems like a pretty freaking preventable thing to happen. You can't just be more transparent with your guys. It doesn't add up, and it also doesn't fix anything. Firing your hitting coach at least makes some sense, but to fire your longtime manager? How is that going to fix this offense from struggling to even make contact with the baseball? Ironically, the Mariners have actually won most of their games against Houston since that ALDS. Like, the Mariners have taken their frustrations out on the Astros, but it's not nearly enough. Not nearly enough to fix what was broken in October of 2022. The Mariners since then have been like a car that's still able to drive, but it has a serious issue from within that's keeping it from reaching the abilities it once was able to. But after a while, the car won't even be able to drive at all because that issue from within will become too much to handle and it will fall apart, which is exactly what happened to the Seattle Mariners two years after getting broken by the Houston Astros. Let me know what you think and thank you for watching.